Alabama's preparation for Missouri intensifies as the Crimson Tide try to head into the off week with a win and keep their college football playoff hopes alive. And a guy that's starting to get some mentions as far as Southern Miss's head coaching job is Kane Womack. We're going to talk about Alabama's defensive coordinator, some of the struggles that the defense has had this season, and where Alabama is as they get set to take on a very dangerous Tigers team at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Like and subscribe, thumbs up. You can do all three of those things, Alabama fans. Roll Tide, everybody. Let's get this thing going. What do you say, everybody? Welcome to the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you for being here. Let's talk some Alabama football. I know all the normal stuff, but uh, great to have you guys here on Mick Gillespie. All right. Kane Womack potentially could be going to the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. And this is a, a report from On3 talking about Kane Womack as a potential candidate for the job with Southern Miss. And and one of the connections there was his dad was uh, one of their great coaches, defensive guy, you know, Dave Womack uh, from there, uh, 94 to 2000. That was the day and age where they beat Alabama a few times at Southern Miss. And they always seem to put up a fight, not the Golden Eagles that we've seen of late. And they're trying to get back to that. So maybe that's the connection uh, would Dave Womack want Kane to be the head coach at Southern Miss? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's, it, you know, Hattiesburg's not a bad place. And it's a program that used to have a rich tradition of being upset artists. I was there when they beat Bama at Legion Field in, you know, the early 2000s. And, and then they also had Brett Favre, remember that? And uh, he had a pretty good career and beat Alabama as well. You know, so so they they they've had some wins over the tide, although Bama's dominated that series. But there was a one there was a long stretch where Southern Miss gave Alabama more fits than Ole Miss or Mississippi State. And then lately they just haven't been that great of a program. So not to say that Kane Womack is taking the job or if he's even even interested in the job, but on three reporting that he's one of the three candidates that they think is going to be targeted by Southern Miss. To go there. Now, there's a few things that I thought about right away when I thought about Kane Womack going to Southern Miss. He left the head coaching job at South Alabama, which now has become a better coaching job than Southern Miss. And to me, if you're going from South Alabama's head coaching job, which is down here in Mobile, and then you're going to go to Tuscaloosa and be the defensive coordinator for one of the premier programs in college football, why would you take a step back and go to Southern Miss unless it was a situation where you felt like, man, you know what, I'm not going to have success here, or you did this and then you thought, well, I'm better off as a head coach. So I think that those are realistic um, considerations that he would make looking at this opportunity. Now, the defense hasn't been great, but they haven't been terrible, but they haven't been great. And he had uh, a pretty good effort against Tennessee, but when they needed to stop late, you know, obviously Alabama lost the game 24, 17. And he said in the press conference, look, you know, we, we needed one more play and we would have won the game. And I thought that the Tennessee game plan was pretty good. I mean, that's a, a Tennessee team that has the potential to score a lot of points. They shut them out in the first half, and then they gave up the three, the, you know, the the scores in the second half, and Bama ended up losing the ball game. Uh, some of the other games haven't been great. Obviously, going back to the Vanderbilt game where Alabama's defense got torched, including uh, 12 first downs and 16 tries. Uh, they looked good against Georgia, really great in the first half, terrible in the second half, but made the plays, and you know, and then losing to Tennessee. So. Is this something to keep an eye on? I think so. It's going to be interesting to just see. Sometimes if you have an opportunity to get rid of someone that you maybe feel like isn't a great fit, 
them taking another job is a way to do that. And I'm not sure how Coach DeBoer is going to handle this. But remember, Nick Saban really didn't fire anybody. Even guys like Lane Kiffin, right at the end of his tenure, I don't think he necessarily got fired. He, he certainly got shown the door when he wasn't really doing the effort that Alabama needed as they were going through the college football playoff and eventually losing to Clemson without him there, right? But I, you never heard about Nick Saban firing anybody. It was always like, hey, you know what? Might be a good idea for you to take another job. I don't know how Coach DeBoer is going to handle that. I don't know that that even plays into this. But to me, seeing his name on the list uh, really tells me a lot about what they think of him. And you watch him at the press conferences. He's got a really smooth, calm delivery. He's great at explaining exactly what the team was trying to accomplish. And I think that he's young, but I also think that he's a, a guy who's going to have a really great coaching career. So we'll see if anything transpires there. But on three put that report out, and I thought, well, you know what? Is this guy gone already? I mean, is he is he going to roll out? And when are they going to want to make that hire? You know, are they going to be patient and say, hey, you finish up the season and then you swing over? Or the fact that they fired their head coach already, does that tell you that they're trying to get somebody in place ahead of time? And I'm guessing that's why you make that move, right? If you're saying, hey, we're not winning, why don't we just go ahead and knock this out now, get a jump on the competition, and make some things happen in that area? And I think that's kind of where they are. All right, let's talk about Alabama's offense because one of the things that this team has really struggled with lately is third down offense. And it's one of the reasons why Alabama is looking at a five and two record. One of the really good sites on uh, social media on X is Bama sidelines. And they put this stat out and it caught my attention so much so that I thought, you know, I want to talk about this on the show today, and that's Bama's offense ranks 51st third down in the nation after week eight, right? And then in just in the month of October, their third down offense is 94th, okay? Something is wrong with Jalen Milrow. I just feel like something is wrong. I, I And I think that knowing his character – and knowing the way that we've seen him play over the course of three seasons, and this by far is the worst that we've ever seen him play, that it could very well be injury-related. We've talked about the his inability to run the football lately and also how he struggled throwing the ball. You know, so could it be a shoulder issue, you know, or could, could it be something in his back that's preventing him from being able to set his feet and throw the ball accurately? Against Tennessee, um, I was doing the All-American Report on our sister channel, I'll call it, or, you know, whatever it is, Cover Crimson. I'm, you know, part of both of those. So <laughs> so anyway, and with Mike, we were on there. And, uh, you know, Mike Johnson's like, look, this is, this is the worst I've ever seen him play. And 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 you get that that injury feel. And for a guy that's been in a locker room, has been hurt, and has seen guys go out and and try to play through injuries, it just get. I just think that we need to keep that in mind here, going forward. That it is, this is so uncharacteristic of Alabama. Do you remember at the beginning of the year they going into the Georgia game? This was one of the best teams in the country on third down conversions, way better than Georgia, and they were they were up and you know almost near eighty percent. And now all of a sudden, you know they, they just keep sinking and sinking and sinking. I don't think that Nick Sheridan. And Kalen DeBoer forgot how to call offense. I feel like this has to do with some sort of injury. The offensive line, too, was not good last week. And some of you guys have said, hey, uh, well, you, they didn't talk about that in the press conference on Monday. Why aren't they talking about it? I'm with you. And, uh, you know, even, even Mike Johnson on that show that you guys can watch said that he thought that the offensive line besides Booker was not good, and I've never heard him say that before. He normally has a lot of great things to say because he's a former offensive lineman, and he constantly says, hey, I watch the offensive line first, uh, and I'm an offensive lineman before um, anything else. So uh, Bama's offense, starting up front, quarterback position, and down the line has got to get better. And if they don't, this game against Missouri could turn out to be 
another loss. And Missouri six and one on the season, and they don't get a lot of respect, but they're tough. And the way that they came back against Auburn was amazing. Their quarterback goes to the hospital, comes back and leads uh, one of the the great come from behind wins in uh, football I can ever remember. I mean, go to the hospital, get checked out. Oh, I'm okay. Come back, Superman. Come back just in enough time to beat Auburn. And now they're coming into Tuscaloosa. This is not a gimme game. I don't care what Vegas is saying in this one. And Alabama has got to focus on this game. Now, if they can win this game on Saturday, they take care of business. Then you have a week off. Then you go into LSU. Everybody in that locker room is going to be ready for that football game. And then it leads into the next thing. And then it leads into the next thing. And you're a little more healthy. But this Alabama team certainly dealing with some some injuries on both sides of the football. And as they move forward, they're going to have to deal with that or it's it th- this season's going to be over. And they lose to Missouri. They're not making the playoff. And then think about that. Now you're, you're talking about can we have a winning record in the SEC? And if Coach DeBoer, and I, and I haven't really heard many people that have said, hey, I want the guy out. I don't think anyone's really there yet, maybe a few people. I think they've looked at the coordinators and kind of questioned them a little bit. But you start losing every game, and all of a sudden, you're getting to the point where you're going, hey, you know what? People are going to wonder if he can handle this job. And we caught into the, the on the video yesterday. We talked about discipline. You know, we, we talked about some of the other stuff that these guys are doing. I get it. The NIL, we talk about this all the time. You know, that you got to deal with the NIL and the transfer portal and all of that stuff. But all the guys that left when Nick Saban left and uh, and everything else. But what I call those is our excuses because there's still a lot of talent there. They're excuses. If you go to work and you don't get the job done, somebody gets rid of you. So I'm not saying I want that. I like Coach DeBoer. I still believe in him. But I'm saying if you lose this game to Missouri, and I know there's a ton of pressure on him to have these guys ready to go on Saturday. Then all of a sudden people are going to be like, wait a second. Then you go down and you lose to Baton Rouge. I mean, this thing could get out of the, this could get off the rails fast. And what a turnaround that would be after Alabama beat Georgia again. And one of the best games of the year. And then you see Georgia beat Texas and you realize that's a pretty monumental win guys. uh, Our channel is always presented by the folks at Pearl River Resort over in Philadelphia, Mississippi. I want to tell you this right now that I love those guys over there for supporting us and for being a partner of ours for a long time. And uh, it's a great relationship. I think you'd love it if you go over there as well. You'll find that that uh, over in Choctaw, Mississippi, over in Philadelphia, you're going to have a great time. Silver Star and Gold Moon Casino celebrating 30 years. They have had some great acts this this season celebrating that, including boys to men. I was there for that uh, in July and uh, the next day, Gretchen Wilson and, uh, <laughs> and big and rich were there. I'm just laughing because I'm thinking about big Elmo with Gretchen Wilson backstage. Pretty funny anyway. Uh, but they've got Scotty McCrary coming from American Idol. You guys know him. And then Gary Allen, he's a really good country singer. Tickets are available. As we speak, those concerts are coming up in November. So uh, make sure that you check it out at Pearl River Resort. And uh, to, the weather's been fantastic. You go to the sports book, the Timeout Sports Lounge with all the big screen TVs, all the games from across the country, and you can lay down a, a legal wager just like you're out in Vegas. Not saying put your house on anything, just saying, hey, you got you got some pizza money, throw it out there and make something happen. Have a little bit of fun, uh, M- MMA, boxing, you know, they got all that stuff, plus football, hockey, World Series as it's starting up now. Um, check it out for yourself. You need any help, they've got people that are behind the window that can do that, or you can go to your own kiosk and, and watch whatever you want and do it yourself from right there. But that's the uh, Time Out Sports Lounge at Golden Moon Casino, and if you you, you put $50 down, Win or lose, you can take that ticket, and for $40, you can play Dancing Rabbit Golf Course. So take advantage of that. Now, the other thing I want to tell you guys is that if you use the promo code Bama Tailgate at newlifeart.com, that is good for 20% off your purchase. So as you pimp out the man cave like I've done with some of my great pictures, I was talking to Mike Johnson today, and he was telling me that uh, Antoine Petway, uh, his kid goes to school with Mike's kid, 
And I said, I got the, the Antoine Petway picture right there. The Daniel Moore print, one of 223. The classics, baby. You can get them for 20% off right now using the promo code Bama Tailgate at newlifeart.com. Uh, thanks for hanging with us, and we will see you guys again tomorrow. Roll tight, everybody. <laughs>